Baba Shuaib, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. <clears throat> uh, let me see, I'm streaming live. Uh, let me see. Uh, just a second, it says here, let me see if it's streaming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know about those on Instagram. I don't know if they can see me streaming live. Let me see. Okay, anyways, let me, let me go on. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you all for coming. Uh, let me give some shout outs. Uh, we have Abdullah Abbas. Uh, we have uh, Zura Holo. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, SDJB, uh, Sister Zainab, I see you. Uh, Yusuf Jamu, Mubarak Abdullah. Adam Harris, Muhammad Ayman, Ayman Zari from Morocco. Yeah, salam to you. Uh, Dangana, Ndagi Rashid, Sobriety, uh, K Sharif. Uh, we have, yeah, we have Abdul Samad Adam. Donuru, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Blinks Black, Musa Arabogo, uh, Mandated Maru. Okay, he says first time I make it to a, a stream. Thank you, thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Mohammed Kamal, I see you. Nara Power, <clears throat> Mubarak Abdullah says, Man of the Amma. Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate the support. So, this is those on Facebook and YouTube watching live and then i'm streaming live on facebook youtube and tiktok and i think on instagram i put on instagram it says i'm streaming but i don't i don't know if those on instagram can see me if you are on instagram and you can see me please kindly let me know uh, because i put it that i should be streaming on instagram as well anyways yeah Ah, so shout outs to those on TikTok as well. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate your presence. Let me see those who are around. I see Rishi Green. I see somebody with a, is it Greek or Russian name? I, I don't know. The person says, Salam, brother. Salam to you. <coughs> uh, I see Afalata Kiluna. I see you. Uh, I see, is it Els, Elspa? Uh, some names. Uh, I, I apologize. Some names are difficult for me to pronounce, right? I've never had somebody pronouncing it, so I, I, I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, I feel like, yes, let me see. I have Sami, is it Rashi or Rasi? Salam to you. I have uh, I have Star Lisa, 
says hi Stanley say hi to you too uh Kinsley KZ says I like you all you are doing uh, I like uh, you mean are uh, you like all what I'm doing I appreciate that thank you for the support uh Bandland yes salam to you uh <clears throat> Somebody says, do you consider Muhammad as a prophet, messenger, or both? Yes, both. Quran chapter 33, verse 40. He is mentioned as a prophet and a messenger. I consider both, as the Quran says. Uh, Kingsley says, I'm learning a lot. Yes, we have uh, Fang Kanu. Uh, aha, okay, yeah. He says, I'm the one who translates your clips for Russian-speaking people. I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. I, I now remember... But because you have your name in a, it's written in Russian, you know, I, I don't know. I cannot pronounce it. So uh, I apologize for that, right? Uh -huh. <clears throat> but uh, thank you all for coming. Along the way, uh, yesterday, I nearly lost my voice uh, due to, uh, you know, some minor flu I got, right? Uh, I think, I don't know if it was dust or something, but I nearly lost my voice due to that but <clears throat> I, I i hope and pray you can hear me sounding clearly right thank you all for coming uh for those on youtube and facebook thank you all for joining adam usman examine the quran uh uh imran khan uh thank you <laughs> yes uh, you are going to enjoy some comedy from the sunnis as as usual right uh -huh. so abdul yes i see you after thank you thank you Okay, uh, the signature of the Sunnis is always the Nasheed. When you hear the Nasheed, uh -huh, so embrace yourself. You are going to be hearing the Nasheed. As soon as you hear the Nasheed, you know that they are going to be, you know, waffling. So I put a picture of this guy as the as the thumbnail, right? Uh, it's called, I, I think, Ahi, Ahi Ayman. He's based in UK. For those in UK, you know him, right? Uh -huh, so I put him uh as the main the main target but surprisingly i found somebody who no, who usually doesn't speak any words of wisdom today i found a video of somebody who actually spoke some wisdom even though he's a sunni i was surprised you know seriously i was shocked right okay so but i was been lying i seek refuge with allah against the against devil who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. This is my way. I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me. And glory be to Allah, for I am not among the idolaters. That is, the mushriks, I'm not among them. Yes, yeah, salam to you. Uh, Reflectime, real Islamic. Chris, I see you. Uh, Bilal Jibril, I see you. Salam. Waya. I love you too, bro. Aha. Uh -huh. So thank you all for coming. So we are going to open the floor now for Asim Al-Hakim, right? He's, he's going to open the floor for us to enjoy today's uh, program. Uh huh. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes, thank you very much. Uh, somebody says what? Dr. Veterinaire. Say people don't like you because maybe you are pragmatic and logic and logical. So continue to enlighten us with. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for noticing that. I appreciate that. Right? Thank you all. So thank you all for those who are here, those who are joining later. I appreciate your presence. Uh, for those who are joining on later, if I'm not able to respond to your salams, uh, I apologize for that. But, you know, I cannot mention everybody as time goes on, right? I need to focus. Hey, salam. Alajat al Mahmoud, I see you. Adeyemu Akani. Oscar Sanya, thank you all for coming. Uh, the moment I start, I can't focus on anything else. I have to keep going. Yeah, I see you, Ebenezer. I see you, Hannah. I see you all. Tell, thank you all for coming. I appreciate that. Okay, let's let's start with uh, Asim Al Hakim, right? So Asim Asim Al Hakim, I've always seen him as a comedian, right? But this time he said something that I can resonate with. He's, he's, he he said something logical. I'm surprised. Was it actually coming from Asim Al Hakim? 
uh like it's mind it's actually mind boggling i was I, when i saw the video i kept thinking i said asim al hakim actually said this wow i was shocked <laughs> Because you know the Sunnis, right? When they make those short videos and they are speaking, like, especially when the Nasheed comes back behind them, you know there's trouble coming. But when I heard this video, so let me play it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to play the video. Listen. Uh, uh, the name of Allah, Muhammad, together, this is totally inappropriate. You are making Muhammad similar to Allah, the Almighty, Azza wa Jal. This mistake because it may lead to shirk 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 and if you put allah muhammad as we find in so many uh, 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 messages that follow innovation and sometimes follow blatant shirk and you ask them you said yeah yeah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was created from allah's light allah's nur so he's an attribute of allah a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim this is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. This is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. But they believe in it. So this is totally prohibited because it insinuates this idea to the layman, to the ignorant people when they see the two names side by side like that. Uh, guys, you, you heard what he said, right? You, you heard what he said. And for the first time... You see, when he was saying something wise, there was no nasheed. Guys, have you noticed? There was no nasheed behind what he was saying. No nasheed. So are you not surprised he said something wise because there's no nasheed behind there? <laughs> Seriously, he said something wise when there was no nasheed. So, so let me repeat the video again. Now listen. Hanging... Uh, uh, the name of Allah, Muhammad, together, this is totally inappropriate. You are making Muhammad similar to Allah, the Almighty, Azza wa Jal. This mistake, because it may lead to shirk. 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 And if you put Allah, Muhammad, as we find in so many uh, 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 messages that follow innovation, and sometimes follow blatant shirk, and you ask them, you said, yeah, yeah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was created from Allah's light, Allah's nur. So he's an attribute of Allah. This is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. This is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. But they believe in it. So this is totally prohibited because it insinuates this idea to the layman, to the ignorant people when they see the two names side by side like that. Ah, so for, for those on Facebook and YouTube, uh, let, 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 me, let me give you the gist of what uh, Asim was saying about, uh, it was talking about, right? I'm sharing a picture on the page, right? Now, this is a picture of, of a mosque, right? I think this mosque, is, is it based in, uh, uh, somebody sent me, was it based in Turkey, Turkey or so? It's as the name of... Uh, uh, you see God, Allah in the middle, and then you have Muhammad, right? Uh -huh. Then they have, I think, uh, is it Abu Bakr on the right, right? Uh -huh. So for those watching, you can see on the, on the page, but unfortunately, those on TikTok, you cannot see that. I apologize, right? Uh -huh. Now, what you are watching on the page, uh, many a times you go to the masjids belonging to the sectarians, uh, especially also the Sunnis, you will see Allah and then you see Muhammad, usually, as if they are classmates, as if they are their colleagues, right? Uh, you see Allah, you see Muhammad. Uh, Quran chapter 72 verse 18, Surah Al-Jinn, chapter of the jinns, it says, <clears throat> He says, indeed, the masjids, uh, the masjid, the place of worship, the places of worship, they belong to God. Then he says, Fala tadu u. Tad, tad u, meaning do not invoke, call on anyone. Do not invoke, do not call on anyone 
along with God, anyone, anyone, right? So in the masjids of God, the masjid, they belong to God. He didn't say, masajida lillahi wa Muhammad. No. The masajids, they don't belong to God and Muhammad. Pay attention. <clears throat> The mushriks, they created another masjid and then they say masjid in Nabawi. Right? In, in Saudi Arabia, they have another masjid and they say that is the prophet's masjid. So as if we have God's masjid and then we have prophet's masjid. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Huh? Quran chapter 14 verse 37. Even him, when he raised the foundation of the house and built uh, uh, the, the Bait al-Haram, he never said huh? this masjid belongs to him or this is the masjid of Ibrahim. No, he never said that. Masjids, they belong to God. They don't belong to anybody. If you see any masjid around you, and then they use the name of somebody to give to that masjid, any entity apart from God, that masjid is full of shirk. Avoid that. Any masjid, they build. Huh? They build. And then they tell you this masjid belongs to Ali. This masjid belongs to Muhammad. This masjid belongs to Susu and So. Be careful. That is full of idol worship. I'm serious. Quran chapter 72 verse 18. All the masjids belong to God. It doesn't belong to Muhammad. It doesn't belong to Ibrahim. It doesn't belong to any entity except God. Because that house is built to be dedicated to God. You understand? The act of worships you do in that masjid is supposed to go to God. So if you have a masjid and they say masjid in Nabawi, masjid, in Al masjid of Ali, masjid of whatever, whatever, masjid of Shia, masjid of Sunnis, masjid of Tariqa to Tijaniya, please avoid that. Because it is full of idol worship. If you don't understand what I'm saying, write down Quran chapter 9, verse 107, 108, and 109 and read it to understand what i'm saying such masjid god says do not start therein do not stand there in ever never stand, stand in such a masjid right because it's full of idol worship you are going to see muhammad's name there and you are going to see god's name there i'm serious if you enter in any masjid and you see this kind of things there, beware. Because that is a masjid which is full of idol worship. They don't follow the principles of God. Avoid such a masjid. Now, are you not surprised such a statement is coming from Asim al-Hakim, who is a Sunni? Are you not surprised? Seriously, are you not surprised? Asim al-Hakim is telling you you go to a masjid, you see Muhammad and Allah, it is haram. But ladies and gentlemen, when you go to Mecca, the Kaaba, for people who have been to Mecca, or if you have seen the videos of Mecca, the Kaaba, don't they have God's name and Muhammad's name on it? And when they are praying, where do they face? They face the Kaaba to pray. God never asked you to face the Kaaba to pray. But they face the Kaaba to pray, right? They face the Kaaba, the cube. They face it to pray. But that black cloth they put on it, it has Muhammad's name and it has God's name on it. Let me see. I think I have the fake picture. I show you something. Uh, let, me, let me try to show you something. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find a, a, a better picture to show you how they did it. Right? Uh huh. So bear with me for a second. I try to do this. Uh, let me try to find the right picture. Uh, uh, 
yeah the picture eyes I, I have here is not uh clear enough right uh-huh but if you if you can google it from your side just google it huh google the picture of the kaaba let me see uh, i think i had some pictures here i don't know where i saved it uh do i have it here somewhere yeah anyways but if if you can google it from your side just a second if you can google it from your side you get to see what i'm talking about let me see yes i had the picture somewhere but uh i'm not sure where i saved it anyways okay now on that on that cube the kaaba they have a cloth the black cloth where they wrote muhammad on it you will see muhammad on on the cloth and then they wrote god and then at the same time people are praying facing the kaaba they pray facing it right aha uh -huh. which you will never find a verse in the quran where it asks you to pray and face the kaaba wallahi lazim you will never find a single verse in the quran where god is asking you to pray facing the kaaba you are the biggest fool to think god ask you to pray facing the kaaba god never ask you to pray facing the kaaba wallahi lazim god never ask you to pray facing the kaaba wallahi lazim salam sister yuki you are welcome aha uh -huh, so if you are sitting here thinking that god ask you to pray facing the kaaba you are actually fooling yourself you will never find such a verse in the quran salam uh, brother isa watson okay now so you heard clearly what asim al hakim said he said that is that is not good that's a haram that's a prohibition right yes i know out of ignorance some people will quote chapter 2 verse 144 go back and read again it shows you don't read your quran you don't study if you if you foolishly quote to me baba shwaib Quran chapter 2 verse 144 you are a fool read it again where does it say kaaba and read that verse again where does it say pray facing the kaaba you will be a fool if you quote chapter 2 verse 144 to me telling me that that says that verse you think it says to pray to face kaaba then you are a biggest fool or maybe you don't understand arabic maybe yes that verse you find masjid al haram and it doesn't mention the word salat there it never tells you to pray to to establish salat and face the kaaba if you want to know where kaaba is mentioned in the quran chapter 5 verse 97 you will see the kaaba there the word kaaba is bait al haram go and see what kaaba is it is bait al haram now chapter 5 verse 97 if god wanted you to pray facing kaaba he will say akimu salat ah for wali wajahaka ila shatar al bait al haram that is kaaba he will tell you to face your your face to turn your face towards what kaaba god never says that you are a fool to try to interpolate your own words inside chapter 2 verse 144 to let it mean that you have to pray facing kaaba you are the biggest fool ever wallahi lazim okay hey yeah, salam liman imrana i see you aha uh -huh. salam to those who, who you are joining aha uh -huh. so god never ask you to pray facing kaaba god never ask you to pray facing masjid al haram if you are doing so and trying to justify it with Quran chapter 2 verse 144 you are a fool I'm serious aha uh -huh. who is a fool someone who lacks good judgment you have a good judgment you will not be praying facing Kaaba what do you mean praying face a house <laughs> for what you are facing that building to do you what where i dare any of you the sunnis Come and show me a verse where God says you should pray and face the Kaaba. 
unless if you are fooling yourselves that i don't doubt yeah do you get my point okay so now whenever you enter any masjid right and you see right and you see muhammad's name here and you see allah's name there wallahi va evacuate you have to vacate such a masjid evict yourself exit before god demolish you and the most that's such a masjid i'm serious if you enter any masjid and you see allah here and you see muhammad here it is a masjid which is set up to i for idol worship yes it is it doesn't belong to god anymore وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدُؤُ مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدًا The masjids, the mosque, the place of worship, they all belong to God, not to God and Muhammad. You are a fool to dedicate the masjid to God and his servants. You are the biggest fool to do that. That is why I played the Sunni video. The Sunni himself, uh, who is an Arab, because I don't look like an Arab, <laughs> I'm dark skinned, so you will not respect my color, maybe. <laughs> so that's why I played the Arab with the, his beard and the one who charged you for hundred dollar for consultation. He is telling you. <laughs> Let me repeat the video. Uh, uh, the name of Allah, Muhammad, together, this is totally inappropriate. You are making Muhammad similar to Allah, the Almighty Azza wa Jal. This mistake because it may lead to shirk. 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 And if you put Allah Muhammad, as we find in so many uh, 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 messages that follow innovation and sometimes follow blatant shirk, and you ask them, you said, yeah, yeah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was created from Allah's light, Allah's nur. So he's an attribute of Allah. This is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. This is shirk. This is kufr. This is blasphemous. But they believe in it. So this is totally prohibited because it insinuates this idea to the layman, to the ignorant people when they see the two names side by side like that. You had it? Mm -hmm. You get it? Okay. If you get it, if you don't get it, forget it about it. Where is that? Where is that audio? Uh, it says what? You get it? You get it. If you don't get it, forget about it. You get it. If you don't get it, forget about it. Okay. So today, Asim Halakim, without the Nasheed, he spoke amazingly. You see, there was no Nasheed at the back. Mm -hmm. So... This is when they, they say something sensible. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> uh -huh. So now, so let's give the thumbs up to Asim Hal Hakim. He actually did well to actually speak the truth, right? Uh -huh. You go to any masjid, you see Allah here, you see Muhammad here. They are not classmates. I'm serious. Such a masjid, you have to ev ev evacuate yourself. Leave. It's full of idol worship, right? You don't equate God. God has no equals. Quran chapter 112, verse 4. You, you don't compare anyone with God. You don't put the servants of God in the equation of God. You are a fool to do that. I'm serious. Okay. Yes, yes. Imran says, I uh, yes. Ironically, he says it may lead you to shirk. It's already shirk. It's, it doesn't lead you to shirk. It's, you are already in the shirk when you put God's name and Muhammad's name in the masjid. Because the masjid belongs to God, not to Muhammad and God. Okay. So let's uh, move to the next person, right? Uh -huh. So that is As Asim Allah Hakim. So the next person, I'm going to play uh, this video. Let's, let me go to this video. Uh, just a second here. Let's take this. I saw this video. Somebody sent me this video of somebody who was holding uh, something, a frame, and he says he has the Prophet Muhammad's hair. So let's let's listen to what he said. This is one of the hairs of Prophet Muhammad, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as you can see, my hand is literally shaking because I'm just so excited to be holding such an amazing thing. Seeking blessings from the traces of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is 100% okay to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you, you had the Nasheed at the back, right? <laughs> there was a Nasheed at the back, right? Did you hear it? <laughs> no, 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 the Bushriks, the Bushriks. <laughs> <laughs> let's listen let's listen to him again this is one of the hairs of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so as you can see my hand is literally shaking because i'm just so excited to be holding such an amazing thing Seeking blessings from the traces of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is 100% okay to do. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> I'm serious with these people. Eh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alpha, Alpha Music Empire. Well, I appreciate the gift. Thank you. God bless you. Wow, this is the second time this person is donating, uh, is, is giving me this uh, gift. I appreciate that. God bless you, man. God bless you. Now, you see, they call it a baruk. This, this is a baruk. <laughs> now, look, they can be saying the dumbest bullshit ever. And then they put the nasheed at the back, right? The nasheed is... <laughs> That is their signature. Now he is telling you to have the trays of the prophets in a belongings or anything, his hair or something. That is a blessing and you can seek a blessing from it. So he has one piece of the hair. I wonder how he got it. Where? I don't know. <laughs> I'm serious. How? Where? So I guess, I don't know. Like, oh my god. <laughs> hey. He says he's 100 percent eh? okay to do to do that. <laughs> hey. Bye <laughs> Zibadu. I'm serious. Okay, now let's. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm. let, let, let's continue. I, like I said, the sectarians, the Sunnis, they will not cease to amaze me, right? They will never cease. It's like they are always bringing something amazing in the deen to make it more like, like you know, laughable. Something amusing. <laughs> uh -huh. Sister Hannah says what? Uh, Hannah Banana says, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy you learned the truth. I used to do some questionable things as well until I started watching Baba Shrine. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, just, just write for me Baba Shrine. Or just write Baba. Or just write Brother Shrine. Please stop ask adding the word shake to my name. Right? Uh -huh. I'm trying my best not to be categorized with Sheikh Mufti Meng, Sheikh Dr. Zakir Naik, Sheikh whatever, whatever. Please. Those, those, those group, uh -huh, I'm not part of them. No. Right? Let me be at as ordinary as possible. 
right? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So <laughs> This guy got me cracking very much. Like, I was like, oh my God. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to play the next video, right? The main person that I'm, I'm doing the program about. But then before I go to the main person, I'm, do, I'm doing this program. Let me use uh, one video to pass a point. There's this this guy, they call him the uh, Imam Tawheed. He's a... Uh, uh, is is how well it, as it is a is a sheet, ah, uh, is a sheet, not like a sheet like poop. No sheet like a Shia a Shia. It represents Shia, right? So let me play this video now. I want you to see how he questions a Sunni, the guy named Hakik. What is his name? Hakikachu, uh, Haki Hakikachu or something like that. Is it Hakikachu? Uh, help me out if you know that guy. His name is Aki Kacho or something. Aha. Uh -huh. So let, let me play that video. Yeah. What Sunnis do? Yes. What if I showed you from here, Abu Bakari, that Muhammad was bewitched and Satan put words in his mouth? That has nothing to do with committing sins. No. A prophet does not commit sins. So, so that's, what, uh, that's what being masum means. Which is worse? Committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth? <laughs> Hold on. As a prophet, mm -hmm. which is worse, you committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth and you go preaching out to many people? Maybe that's how the butchering happened. No, this is something that you're referring to a very specific event. And the scholars have discussed this and have said that this is actually evidence that he was a prophet of God. That, that Satan put words in his that mouth. He was that he corrected this. I mean, there are some scholars who dispute the veracity of that, but we I'll concede. No. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why? Okay. Uh, so that was uh, uh, Im uh, Imam Tawheed, right? He was questioning, uh, somebody says, is it Daniel? Daniel Hakikachu, right? And these are the guys who represent the Sunni ideology, right? They will, they will shed blood to protect the Hadith books. I'm serious. These people, they will shed blood to protect those books, right? They don't give a damn about the Quran. No. Right? So they will defend every trash that comes from that book, those books they have. They will defend it. So this Imam Tawheed, you know he's a Shia, but he normally quotes the Hadith books because the Sunnis rely on them the most than any other group. So he quotes it, he can quote it to show them their flaws and their, you know, comedies that they, they have there. Right? Uh -huh. Somebody says his name sounds like a, po a Pokemon name. Yeah, it sounds like a comedy, like a, like a, you know, a clown or something. Uh, is it Daniel, Daniel Hakikachu? Hakikachu. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Imam Tawheed is questioning him. Now, of course, both of them, I categorize them as mushriks, both, both of them, because he's a Shia and this is a Sunni. But based on the question he was asking him, let me repeat the video, then you get to hear wh what he was questioning him about. They do? Yeah. Sunnis do? Yes. What if I showed you from here, Abu Bakari, that Muhammad was bewitched and Satan put words in his mouth? That has nothing to do... You understand? He said, what if I show you a verse from their hadith books. Yeah, thank you. Ninu, Kitos, Kitos, Lias, Kitos. What if I show you that Muhammad was bewitched? Yes, they do have in their hadith books that Muhammad, a spell was cast on Muhammad. And then he was saying words from Shaitan. Look, the hadith follow hadith he used, they don't see anything wrong with this kind of narrations. To them, it's okay. If these people can admit the prophet married a six years old girl, slept with her when she was nine years old girl, they are okay with anything else, right? Uh -huh. They are okay. To them, there's no problem. You understand? Because there's a veil which covers them in their idol worship. So they don't see. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate that. So here, what we are watching on the screen is a Sunni trying to de defend an ideology which contradicts the position of the prophets in Islam, Right? Remember in Quran chapter 5, verse 67, 
God was telling the messenger, uh, he says, Ya you are Rasul, Balig ma unzila ilayka bin rabbik, wa illam taf alu, fama balakta risalatahu. Then he says, Wallahu ya sibika bin adnas. Uh, thank you, my sister, for the gift. Uh, what is it? Is it uh, Labi, Labi Love? I appreciate that. Thank you for the gift. Uh -huh. So, Quran chapter 5, verse 67. God says he will protect or safeguard the messenger against the people. So, according to the Sunnis, which means God couldn't fulfill his promise, then it has to take somebody to cast a spell on the messenger for him to get to a, a certain point of time to be thinking that the devil has cast a spell on him and he's speaking words from the devil. Seriously. So after God making the promise in Quran chapter 5 verse 67, he couldn't protect the messenger. So now a spell has been cast on him based on your books. The same book which told you Moses was running with his, scroll, uh, the, 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 his balls naked outside like this, <laughs> chasing the stone to go and beat the stone. Do you remember? Did you watch my lectures last week? <laughs> that same book telling you Prophet Musa was running and chasing the stone. Bring my clothes. Bring it back. <laughs> and when he got to the stone, he started slapping the stone. This is what the Hadith says. I'm not saying it. <laughs> I'm not the one saying it. They said it in their books. It's there. Uh, so he chased the stone to beat the stone. I wonder how a human being beats the stone. A human being, you are beating the stone. How? Okay. So let's listen to them. Uh, they are questioning him based on their book, their the comedy. So listen. With committing sins. No. A prophet does not commit sins. Now this is where the idol worship comes in. No Sunni on earth will admit to you that the prophet comm ever committed sins. They will not admit. They will tell you the prophet is a sinless man, just like the Christians also do with Jesus. They will say Jesus is a sinless man, and that's why Christians idolize Jesus. They call him God. So what do you think the Mushriks will also do, the Sunnis will also do? They will take the prophet to the level of God. You understand? That's what they do. They said the prophet is a sinless man. So now, Imam Tawheed is going to use his Hadith book to question him. Now listen. So, so that's, what, that's what being masu means. Which is worse? Committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth? Because your book admits Satan put his words in the mouth of Muhammad. That is why Quran chapter 6 verse 112 to 113, it tells you that these people are the enemies of the prophets. Because what do they do? They and the jinns, they formulate what we call Zukhraf al kawl al gurura the decoration of delusive speech or statement. They decorate it. Don't you see how they decorate Hadith books? Now, don't you see the books on the shelf? I think I have a picture. Let me show you how they decorate the books. I have a picture to show. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Yeah, I can show it on the screen. Unfortunately, for those on uh, this thing, you cannot see that, right? <clears throat> These are their books on the screen. You will see Sahih al-Bukhari, Jami al-Thirmidi, Sunan uh, an, an, uh, Nasai, you have Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawood, Sunan Ibn Majah, uh, Sahih Muslim, and so on. It's a decoration. It's a full of decoration. They decorate these books more than the Quran. Whenever you go to any mushrik mosque, masjid, uh, full of mushriks, you will see in the cabinet or their bookshelf, their library, they arrange all of these garbage books there and decorate them. They are highly decorated. Wallahi lazim. These books are more expensive than the Quran. Yes. They sell those books more expensive than the Quran. I'm serious. So when you go to the, the, the Mushrik's Masjid, you see the decoration of such books. They are very expensive. 
The cheapest you can get is like 300 euro for one book. Yes. But when you go to any masjid, they can even give you the Quran for free. They say, take, take, mashallah, take the Quran. But Akhi, you cannot understand this book unless you come and buy the 700 euro book. The one we have on the shelf. <laughs> then they tell you that one explains this one. <laughs> so beware. Uh -huh. Yes. So, Allah <laughs> So, he was questioning him. Let's listen to the question. Then I come to show you the contradictions from the Sunni beliefs. Right? Hold on. As a prophet, mm -hmm. which is worse? You committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth and you go preaching that to many people? Maybe that's how the butchering happened. No, this is something that you're referring to a very specific event. And the scholars have discussed this and have said that this is actually evidence that he was a prophet of God. You see how, how they become puppets of the scholars. They said the scholars have what, what, what. I thought they said the prophet was the one explaining everything to them in Islam. The mushriks, that's what they normally tell us. They will tell you, have you ever heard it before? They will tell you the prophet is the best mufassir of the Quran. When we say mufassir, somebody who gives you explanation. Right? Uh -huh. Do you understand? This, this is what they will tell you. So they will say the prophet is the best mufassir of the Quran or Islam in general. But yet, when you are talking to these Sunnis, always they will quote their shuyuks, their scholars, their ulama, always. Look, when we quote verses in the Quran, you will never find a verse where God says, wa wa minkum. He never say ulama'u. No. What the Sunnis will do is, they will change the word, wa ulil amri minkum. they will change it, and then they will put the word scholars there. So as if God doesn't know the word ulama. God used the word ulama in Quran chapter 35 verse 28. God used the word ulama in Quran chapter 26 verse 197. Go and check. He used the ulama. If God wanted to use ulama, he would have used it in Quran chapter 4 verse 59. But he chose not to use that. Wa ulil amr minkum. فَإِنْتَنَا أَزَاتٌ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ He didn't say فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ وَأُولَمَاءِ مِنْكُمْ He never said that. He never said if you have any dispute, you should go back to the ulama مِنْكُمْ He never said that. There is no ulama in that verse. So what the mushriks will always do is to interpolate their own words. Remember, Quran chapter 10 verse 82. God will enforce the truth with his words even if the criminals dislike it. And this is what Baba Shraib I represent. I try to let the words of God speak to the people instead of choosing my own words to put it there. Do you get the point? So what these people will do is they will now twist the words Put their own understanding from external sources. Try to let it make sense in their own context. So now, Imam Tawheed was questioning Hakikachu. Hakikachu is being questioned from their own books of belief that they claim the Prophet was under a spell. Right? And these same people are now saying this man is sinless. If somebody has been under the spell of uh, 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 Shaitan, and according to the Hadith books, he went out preaching to the people from the words of Shaitan. And the same man you are telling us he's sinless according to your own books, not according to the Quran. I'm going to prove to you from the Quran. The prophet was asked to ask forgiveness for his sins. And I'm going to show you the verse. Now, let this video finish and see something. That, that Satan put words in his that mouth. He was that he corrected this. I mean, there are some scholars who dispute the veracity of that, but we, I'll concede. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why? Okay. 
So many a times you hear the sectarian saying that the prophet is sinless. He doesn't sin. That's what they will tell you. They will say he is sinless. Okay, let's let's analyze something here. Let's let's check something here. Let's fact fact uh, fact check them. I'm going to show you something from the Quran so that you pay attention to how the sectarians have been lying about everything. Hey, what just happened? Uh huh. Something just happened to my page. I'm like, what happened? Maybe is he Hakikachu doing something to my page? How did that happen? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me try to share this. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 193. When you go to Quran, chapter 3, verse 193, I want you to pay attention to a particular word in that verse, right? In that verse, it says, "Rabbana inna na samina munadiyan yunadin al iman an aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna. Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma al abrar." So the verse says, "Our Lord, indeed we have heard a caller calling to the faith that believe in your Lord, so we have believed." Our Lord, so forgive us our sins, Zunubana. When we say Zambi, Zambi, it is also a sin, right? It is a sin that you do out of mistakes. That is what we call Zambi. A sin you have committed out of mistake. We call it Zambi, right? So in that verse, we are telling God, Rabbana faghfir lana Zunubana. That is our sins. And atone our bad deeds. Say ye atina. Wa kafir anna say ye atina. Wa tawafana ma al abarar. And cause us to die or take us away. The word tawaf. Huh? Tawafa. Huh? Mutawafika. Just like he told Isa alayhi salam. Right? Uh -huh. So take uh, our souls away whilst we are pious. Huh? Okay. So now this verse I'm showing you. I'm showing you this verse for a reason. Now you see this word. Zunubana here. It is in plural form. We call it in Arabic Jamu. -u. But when we bring it in a singular form, which is the Mufrad, huh? this Mufrad, we call it Zambi. Zambi. Huh? Okay. Zambi means your sin, a sin that you have done out of mistake. We call it Zambi. Then we have what we call Ithma. This uh, ithim, oh, this ithim is a sin you do intentionally. So there's a different type of sins a person does, right? So let me show you this verse so that you understand what I'm saying, right? Quran chapter 7, verse 33. Let me show you something. God says, Kul inna maharrama rabbi al fawahisha, ma zohara midha, wa ma batana. Well, ithma. So you see the word here, ithma in Arabic, uh, is a what we call is another form of a sin, but this is a intentionally done sin, which is deliberate sin. You do it intentionally. We call it ithma. When we say zambi, it is a sin, but you do it out of mistake. Do you do you get are you following what I'm saying here? Okay. So now we are going to see which of the two has the prophet done. Right? Okay. <clears throat> so many a times you hear the sectarians tell you that the prophet never makes mistake. 
or never said. That's what they will tell you. They will say the prophet is sinless, and that is a problem. That is a lie. You're trying to put him in a godly status. He's a human being for, God, for the sake of God. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Now look. <clears throat> When you go to Quran chapter 5, verse 87, I'm going to show you something. In Quran chapter 5, verse 87, God says, Ya you are Lazina Amanu, La to Harimu Tayibatin, Ma Ahalallahu Lakum. Then he says, Wala Tatadu. Then he says, What? Inna Allah La you Hibbul Mutadin. Oh, you who believe, do not prohibit good things which God has made lawful for you. And do not trespass. Indeed, God does not like the trespasses. So now, God says we should not prohibit the good things he has made lawful for us. If anything good God made lawful to you, you shouldn't prohibit it. So now, I'm going to show you something. This is a command going to every believer, including the prophet. He's a believer. You cannot tell me he's a disbeliever. God says, oh, you who believe. The question is, does the prophet believe in the verses of God or not? Yes, he believes. Salam. Uh, Abdul Karim, Ashley, you're welcome. Uh -huh. The prophet believes in the verses of God, right? Okay. So now I take you to Quran chapter 66, verse 1. Now look at what the prophet did. God says, Ya you and Nabi, Lima to Harim, Ma ahallallah laka, Taptagi mardata azwajik, Wallahu gafuru rahi. Oh, you prophet. Why do you prohibit what God has made lawful for you? Seeking the satisfaction of your wives. And God is forgiving and merciful. Now the first issue here is why. This why is a negative why. It shows that there's something negative has been done. Not why in the sense of something good. The why he's been asked here because he committed an error. It is a mistake he made. Ask any sectarian, can the prophet make mistake? Can he make mistake? Yes, he can. He's a human being. To err is human. The only entity who cannot make mistake is God. God does not err, nor does he forget. You see these two things? It is the human nature. We forget and we make mistakes. The moment you are telling me the human being cannot make mistake, you are the dumbest fool ever to ever exist in this universe. If you tell me there is any human being who ever existed in time and never makes mistake, you are the dumbest fool ever. I'm serious. It is only God who does not make mistake and who does not forget. My Lord does not err eh? nor does he make mistake. Okay. So now we can clearly see we are coming from chapter 5, verse 87. God is telling those who believe, oh, you who believe, do not prohibit good things which God has made lawful for you. And do not trespass. So now we all heard it. Sabina wa Atana. We heard it and we obey. So now here we go. Prophet in Quran chapter 66, verse 1. Oh, you prophet, why do you prohibit? Ask any uh, sectarian. Is it not a mistake? They will tell you, Ahi, no, Prophet, oh, subhanallah, Prophet never makes mistake. Ahi, he didn't make a mistake. He is not a mistake. Still, you ask them, why? Did God ask him why? Why do you prohibit what God has made lawful? A simple statement, simple English. Look, if this verse is translated in any language of this world, it will still make sense. <laughs> Sectarians who worship the prophet, who tell you the prophet never makes mistake, who tell you the prophet never sinned, oh my God. They can wear the same boot with you because of this verse. They will tell you, You are the enemy of the prophet. How can you say he make a mistake? Subhanallah. Don't say that. Don't say that. Is God saying, how can you fool me? <laughs> fool you <laughs> Don't say what. The verse is saying, why do you prohibit what God has made lawful? 
it tells you legislation is not in the hands of the prophet when God has not authorized him. He can only legislate with the authority of God. That is why he's being questioned. Why do you prohibit? Okay, we are not saying that he sinned deliberately because that's why God was questioning him. Why? Because it might be out of mistake. Okay, now, so let's see where God asked him to ask for forgiveness. So now we go to Quran chapter 47, verse 19. L listen to what God told him. Chapter 47, verse 19. God says, فَأَلَمُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لِزَنْبِكَ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ then he says, Wallahu ya'lamu a mutakallabakum wa mathwakum. And know that there is no God except Allah. And seek forgiveness for your sin. That is your zambi. Zambi means a sin you do out of mistakes. And for the believing men and the women, yes, the believing men can make mistakes also. They can commit sins out of mistake. Look, this is not an issue to argue about. If you are telling me the prophet does not sin, then how come God is saying he should ask forgiveness for himself and also for the believing men and the believing women? My question to you, the mushriks, the believing men and the believing women, do they also sin or not? Or are, they, are you going to say they are also sinless? Seriously? When we say the prophet sins, we are not equating his sins with ours, like to say he's sinning like the ordinary layman. No. He can make mistakes. He's a human being. To err is human. Do you get my point? So the verse in Quran chapter 47 verse 19 is not even the only verse God asked him to ask for forgiveness. I'm taking you to another one. Quran chapter 40 verse 55. <laughs> Chapter 40, verse 55. First bir in the word Allah haq was tagafir li zambika was sabbi bihamdi rabbika bil ashi wal ibukara. Now, so be patient indeed. The promise of God is true. And seek forgiveness for your sin and glorify with praise of your Lord in the evening and in early morning. That is early in the morning. You say the prophet never sins. You say the prophet never makes mistakes. So is the Quran lying to us? You rather prefer the Hadith fabricated books over the Quran? You fail to realize that the Hadith books is making you worship the prophet blindly, yet the truth is in the book of God. Ja al haq so you leave the truth in the words of God and you go to give credence to what? Some garbage books. Finally, let's go and ask Prophet Muhammad, can you make mistake or not? Chapter 34, verse 15. Prophet Muhammad, can you make mistake or not? Now listen to what he said. Kul, in the laltu, فَإِنَّمَا أَدِلُّ عَلَى نَفْسِي وَإِنِي تَدَيْتُ فَبِمَا يُوهِ إِلَيَّا رَبِّي إِنَّهُ سَمِيُّ الْقَرِيبِ Say, if I should err, listen, قُلْ إِنْ دَلَلْتُ When we say dalal, dalaltu, it means to err, to make a mistake. So the prophet says, if I should err, if I should make a mistake, if I should go astray, if, because to err is human. So he's telling you from now that in case he should make a mistake, then I will only make a mistake against my own soul. Do you see what the prophet is saying? Then he says, but if I am guided, then it is by what my Lord inspires to me. Indeed, he is hearing and nearby. 
So it is only God who does not make mistake. It is only God who does not forget. By a human being, to forget is normal. Even Musa go and read chapter 18, verse, verse, uh, verse start from verse 50, coming down. Musa alayhi salam, when he was work, walking with uh, the young man, when they were going to meet the teacher, to teach, the, to teach him knowledge, they forgot where they have to uh, stop and eat. And the fish they had escaped. To, to forget is normal. And to make a mistake is normal for a human being. You can make mistake. The moment you tell us a human being does not make mistake and he, he never sinned, you are a fool. <laughs> I'm serious. No wisdom can come out of your mouth again. Do you get a simple logic there? Uh -huh. We are using the Quran to give you the truth out there. It doesn't mean the prophet is a layman like us. It's the truth whether you like it or not. Go and bend the sea. God will enforce the truth with his words. Even if the criminals dislike it. If you are a criminal, go and burn the sea. Thank you very much, Ibrahim Odejami, for the gift. Uh -huh, okay. So the main guy I'm going to play his video uh, is... Uh... <clears throat> Let me... Now, now I'm going to Ahi Ayman. So let's listen to Ahi Ayman. So this guy... By the way, this guy, I think he's trying to act like the fake Prophet Jesus. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated. Don't you see that he looks like the fake Jesus? Huh? That the... <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Adam Harris, for the gift. Thank you for the super uh, sticker on YouTube. I appreciate that. And thank you for those sending me the gift on TikTok as well. God bless you. Uh -huh. This guy looks like the fake Jesus. Do you know the Jesus I'm talking about? <laughs> the white man Jesus. Don't you see that he looks like the fake Jesus? Uh -huh. This guy, uh, Ahi, Ahi Ayman, the, gang, the gangster sheikh. Uh -huh. Okay. So now let's see. And listen to this very, very carefully. Every single person in my ummah, that's every single one of us here, will be forgiven except Except for the one that sins publicly and openly. What, 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 what did he say? What, what was he saying? What is he trying to say? It's like... <laughs> Let me repeat the video. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated. This is what they do. Always the Prophet said. Always the Prophet said. You remember Muhammad Hijab? When he was saying, the Prophet said, you can lie. <laughs> do you remember the video? <laughs> do you remember when Muhammad Hijab said, you can lie? The Prophet said, you can lie. And, and even if it is black lie. Now, this guy also now, he's sitting down. He's going to lie and he's telling you the prophet stated. Right? This is what they do. Huh? Thank you very much, uh, Abdul Karim, for the, for the gifts. I appreciate that. He is going to lie. He will say the prophet stated. Yet they cannot prove. Seven layers. Salam. They cannot prove this. Okay, now listen. And listen to this very, very carefully. Every single person in my ummah, that's every single one of us here, he says, the prophet says, every single person in my ummah. Then he said, that is all of us here. The, this Ayman, Ahi Ayman is saying that, all of us here. Uh -huh. Because the Sunnis, I think they, they always think the prophet belongs to them. This is what the Sunnis think. Look, Sunnis always think prophet Muhammad belongs to them, not more than even the Arabs. <laughs> I'm serious. The Sunnis are the same ones claiming they will be under the flag of the Prophet as if it's a football match. <laughs> so they consider themselves the Ummah of the Prophet. That is why Mufti Beg wants to look like the Prophet. 
<laughs> Mufti Beg. Don't you see how we try to wear the makeup and polish his beard and everything? He wants to look like the prophet. Okay. So now, Ahi Ayman, listen to the statement he's going to say. We'll be forgiven. He says, everyone among the Ummah of Muhammad will be forgiven. Now listen carefully. Uh -huh. Except, except for the one that sins publicly and openly. So everyone will be forgiven. Except the one who sins, who commits sins publicly and open. What is this guy telling you? So these sheikhs, they are hiding and committing sins. <laughs> Listen, listen, listen to the wisdom here. He's, he's telling you from the hadith that the prophet said, uh, all the people from his ummah will be forgiven, except the one who is sinning, who commits sins publicly. Listen to the word, publicly. And when we tell you the shiuks are hiding and watching porn and doing all the bad stuff, you think we are joking, we are lying. When we are telling you the sheikhs are hiding to do all the evil things, you think we are lying. They get all these things from the hadith books. This is what he is telling you. That the ummah, the prophet says, all his ummah will enter Jannah. They think Jannah is just easy for you to go and take and chew. As if it's the, it belongs to your fathers. You go and enter Jannah like that. So everyone will enter Jannah. Why? Because you are hiding your sin. Okay, let's go and check the Quran. Chapter 7, verse 33. Listen what God says. God says, Kul. He's telling the messenger to say, Kul. This is how this mushrik contradicts the prophet. They are saying the prophet says that garbage statement from the hadith. Now we are going to check the prophet from the Quran, what he says. God asked the prophet of the Quran to say, Kul. Kul. Inna maharrama rabbi yalafawahisha. Ma zohara minha. Wama batana. Listen carefully. God asked the prophet of the Quran to say, Kul, inna ma harrama rabbi al-fawahisha, ma zuhara minha, wama batana, wal-ithma, wal-bagya bigayr al-haq, wa antu shirku billahi ma lam yunazzal bihi sultanan. Then he says, wa anta kulu ala allahi Say, my Lord only forbids obscenities, what is apparent thereof and what is hidden. God is not only forbidding public sins, He is even forbidding what is hidden. Do you understand? And He says, of sin. He forgive, forbids obscenities. Then he says, what is apparent thereof and what is hidden of sin? Seriously. So if God forbids both public sins and, and hidden sins, you are sitting in front of the people, the fake Jesus, you, uh, Ahi, uh, Amen. Fake Jesus, I call you fake Jesus because you look like the fake Jesus. <laughs> uh -huh. So, Ahi Amen. Uh, oh, I didn't put the verse on the screen. Sorry. Let me share this verse on the screen whilst I'm talking so you can see it. So, this is the verse on the screen. Do you understand? So, the fake Jesus is telling you that the prophet said they will never give you a reference. This is what they do, they don't give you the references when they say these statements. They don't want you to go investigate and check the lies they speak. Uh, so he is quoting from the Sunnah, they are, they are fake Sunnah, and then they are telling you that the Prophet said all people from his Ummah will enter Jannah except the one who sins publicly. So, meaning you should be hiding your sins. <laughs> so, now, now you see the Shayuk, so do you see why they are hiding to, to sin? Uh, now, do you understand? Ahi, Ahi, you understand? Uh huh. So according to them, if you are sitting in hiding and sitting, you are going to Jannah. So the one who is who is sitting publicly, <laughs> oh no 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 no. 
seriously. I don't understand how their logic works. But surprisingly, he didn't play it in the sheet. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Oh, there was no the sheet. I'm surprised. We have to investigate this issue. Hey. Bye, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to his next video. Right? His next video is this. So, Ahi Ayman, we had your first statement. We are going to your second statement. My dear respect to brother, my dear respect to sister, please, please understand that you will enter Jannah only through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. You're not going to enter Jannah because of someone else's opinion. You're not going to enter Jannah because this person thinks this about you or that person thinks that. No, bro. You're going to enter Jannah through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated this. The companions of God look at even you, Ya Rasulullah. Even though you're the best of creation. Even you. He said, even me. I'm going to enter Jannah through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Okay. Ahi Ayman. Ahi Ayman. You you heard he was playing a nasheed at the back. Uh -huh. So the dumbest things they say is coming from when they are playing the nasheed. Right? So he says, Wallahi, nobody will enter what? Who will enter what? Jannah except by God's mercy. Is that what God says in the Quran? Is that what God says? That nobody will enter Jannah except by God's mercy. Is that what he said? These people, they don't want you to do the real righteous works to achieve your goal at the day of, the, or the day of judgment. They want you to rely on what day the shiuks tell you. So you think that is Islam? No, that is not Islam. Wallahi, that is not Islam. Okay. Now I repeat the video. Listen to what he said. Ma'akhi. My dear respect to brother, my dear respect to sister, please, please understand. He's playing the nasheed, he's begging you to understand what he's going to say. Please understand, please. Even if it doesn't make sense, you have to understand, right? That you will enter Jannah only through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So you will enter, you will enter Jannah only. Listen to the word. We are speaking English, right? Only. O-N-L-Y. S Exclusively, only through the mercy of God. That is how we are going to enter Jannah. So it is no more about your righteous works. This is what he's saying. I'm going to show you the contradiction. You're not going to enter Jannah because of someone else's opinion. You are not going to enter Jannah because of someone else's opinion. No problem. That one I agree. You're not going to enter Jannah because this person thinks this about you or that person thinks. You are not going to enter gender because this person thinks this about you or that person thinks this about you. That I agree. No, bro. You're going to enter gender through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So he says you are going to enter gender through God's mercy. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated this. He says the Prophet Muhammad stated this. They don't give you reference, always. The companions of God look at even you, Ya Rasulullah. And then the prophet, the companions of the prophet look at him, him and said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, even you yourself, you are only going to enter paradise with the mercy of God only? Even though you are the best of creation. Even though you are the best of creation? Even you. He said, even me. Then he said, he said, even me. Even me. Okay. I'm going to enter Jesus for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. He says even he himself is going to enter inside Jannah from God's mercy. So it's no more about the works you do. We are going to check the Quran. Right? Let's investigate these people. First of all, if you go to Surah al uh, this is the chapter. Chapter of the what? Uh, so sorry, Surah Al-Zalzala. Uh, Zalzala. That is uh, chapter 99. Then you go to the verse 7 and verse uh, eight. Huh? Now, before verse 7 and verse 8, I'm going to read verse 6. 
Let's see what God says. Yaubaizid yazduru nasu ashtata liyurawu a'ama lahum. Then he says, فَمَنْ يَعَمَلْ مِثْقَالَ زَرَّةٍ خَيَّ يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعَمَلْ مِثْقَالَ زَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَى God says on that day, that is the day of judgment, mankind will issue forth, you will come forward, dispersed to be shown their deeds. أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ Liyirau, to be shown, amalahum, their deeds. Then God says, whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it. Now, we are going to see how a person will enter Jannah. Chapter 39, verse 16. Listen what God says. And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about God with their faces blackened. Is there no abode in hell for the arrogant ones? Verse 61. And God will rescue those who were pious by their achievements. No evil will touch them, nor will they grieve. Does the verse say God will rescue the pious by his mercy? Why did he ask you to believe and do righteous deeds? Because the righteous deeds are going to save you when you come. It's just like a worker. You work in a company. You only get your salary based on the hours and achievements you have done at work. That's how the boss use, what the boss is going to use to pay you. If it is only Going to, if your boss is going to only pay you by mercy, I don't see why he should give you a fixed contract. Are, are you resonating with the logic I'm giving you? If it is only about the mercy, no need to give you any contract to do. Yeah, you just have to tell you, go and do your thing. I'll just put you in my, give you the salary regardless. Go ahead, go ahead, do your thing. Just believe in Muhammad and come and get the salary. This is what the Sunnis will keep telling you. He is telling you the mercy, only the mercy of God will put you in Jannah. Whilst the Quran is telling you otherwise. These people venerate their garbage books over the Quran. Wallahi lazim, that's why I call them hadith use. Even if they are against you, the one following the Quran, they will only quote against to hadith to prove their point. You ever seen them quoting Quran? In the real essence of the Quran to prove their point? No. They always quote hadith to prove their point. They will say, You, you are a kafir. The prophet spoke about people like you in the hadith. If you ask him, Where? In our hadith, the hadith of the prophet. Akhi, you don't believe in hadith? You say, Oh, the Quran is the hadith. He says, Ah, who's been lying with the shaitan? The Quran is not, is not hadith, Akhi. Wallahi, wallahi. The Quran is not hadith, Akhi. Who told you? Quran is hadith? No, Ahi, you are lying, wallahi. Then, then they will say, the, the, say, say, Buhari, say, Muslim, that's the hadith. <laughs> hey. Allah, Mujirikega. Seriously. <laughs> you, are, you are trying to convince them. Look, their own imams, their own shiuks, their own scholars, when they are going to start their khutbah, when I say khutbah, the public address, the speech, they will say, Inna azdakal hadith kitabullah. The most truthful hadith is the book of God. This is, this is what their shuriks tell them. But because they are sheeple, they don't even understand the Arabic their scholars are saying. They don't know what their scholars are saying. So the scholars will say, Inna azdakal hadith kitabullah. The best or the most truthful or the most honest of hadith is what? The book of God. This is what their scholars tell them. You never heard any scholar, seen this scholar saying that? You pay attention. Let me see if I have one video. I can show you what their scholars normally do so that you get to hear how their scholars speak to the audience. Do I have it here? Uh, do I have it here? Let me see. 
Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think I have it here. I will have played it for you to hear. The quotes in Nazdaq al Hadith, Kitabullah. This is what they do, the sectarians. So many a times when they are starting their khutbah, normally pay attention to how they start. You see them quoting these references to start their speech. They will say, in the al Hadith, Kitabullah. The most truthful of Hadith is the Book of God. But yet, when you are talking to a sectarian and you say the Quran is Hadith, they say, no, Akhi. No, 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 the Quran is not Hadith. They say, no, 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 no. You don't believe in the Hadith of the Prophet? Akhi, Prophet Muhammad, you don't believe in his Hadith? Akhi, you are a kafir. You don't follow his Sunnah? You are a kafir. Let's continue. Okay. Now, listen here. Let's go to the next video for uh, Akhi Ayman. His next video, he was speaking about, let me see this one. Because nowadays they're wearing abaya, Allahumma barik. But they got this belt across their waist. Why are you trying to show your figure, man? A woman that shows her figure would not come 500 years close to Jannah, bro. Because she's showing her figure. How about that? This is a hadith. A woman that is clothed but yet naked. What does that mean, bro? A woman that is just modest. But yeah, you can see every figure. Or what? Who are you trying to fool? And you got thirsty brothers. Oh, mashallah, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Am I lying though? <clears throat> now he played, they are playing the nasheed again. The nasheed. He thinks he's saying something wise, very wise, right? The sisters he's talking about, it's not as if they are naked. It's not they are not naked, right? There is a there is a statement which says beauty in the, is in the high eyes of the beholder. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. There are some women naturally when they dress, you will see the the contours of their body, meaning the shape of their body, based on the style of dress. I'm not saying they should wear too much revealing clothes. Revealing means to be naked, like to show naked parts. But I'm talking about, look, women, when a woman is wearing a t-shirt and she's not wearing a blouse, if she has big uh, chest with a breast, it will be protruding and it will be showing, right? So there are style of dress, there's a style of dressing she has to do to look at least moderate or modest because modesty is important. But what is his main point here? His main point is trying to base it on some ladies wearing the belt. Huh? Wearing the belt. So now listen to the point here. Sisters nowadays, they're wearing abaya. Allahumma barik. He says the sisters wearing abaya. When we say abaya, this long robe, the gown that they wear, the, ro the robe. And then he says, God bless. Allahumma barak, right? Okay, so, oh God, bless, right? But they got this belt across their waist. Then he says, they got this belt. So he's been observing, he's been watching also. So they get this belt around their waist, right? Why are you trying to show your figure, man? And he says, why are you trying to show your figure, man? So are you talking about man or women? Huh? I'm not saying he said it. Why are you trying to show your figure, man? He says, why are you trying to show your figure, man? You are talking to women. You don't need to say man. Why are you so gangster like that? I, Ahi, Ahi, hey, man. You are talking to women. You are saying man. You are trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
So, Sheikh Ahi, Ahi Ayman, you'll be watching their figure, eh? <laughs> you'll be staring at their figure. Because you said, the, you said that the prophet said, you, if you want to sin, you should not sin publicly. So you'll be watching it secretly. Ah. Okay. And then you are telling them why are they showing their figure, man? You are calling them man again. They are women, not man. Eh? Okay. A woman that shows her figure would not come 500 years close to Jannah, bro. And then he is going to, to put the lie as a seal, as a stamp on the statement. A woman that shows her figure will not come 500 years, not to the 500 years closer to Jannah. And a woman that shows her figure will not come 500 years close to Jannah. How? How? Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you the contradiction in his statement. He says a woman that shows her figure will not come 500 years to Jannah. 500 years. You yourself, how many years have you lived on, the, in the, on earth? How many years are you going to live on earth? For you, 500 years away from Jan Why? Why? Please, I, Ahi, I, Ayman, I, please, stop making things worse than they already are. I'm serious. Huh? First of all, you tell them, don't stop showing your figure, man. You call them man. They are women. You call them man. I don't know why you are using the gangster language for the women. But let me show you the stupidity in your statement. I take you to the Quran now. Now, you remember what happened to Adam and his and his wife, right? Okay. I'm going to read some verses from the Quran to show you something. He said a woman who shows a figure is not going to enter gender. Right? Okay. So now, you know the story of Adam and his wife, right? Okay. Let's go to the Quran and read. So after that, we are going to find out is. Is Adam is the wife of Adam going to Jannah or not? Maybe she's going to hell, according to Ahi Ayman, right? Ahi Ayman is he Ayman or Ayman? Well, so Quran chapter seven verse nineteen. Let me share the screen and show you. According to these guys, any woman who shows a figure is not going to paradise, right? Okay, verse nineteen, chapter seven, verse nineteen. Oh, Adam, you and your mate should dwell in the garden and eat from wherever you both desire, and, but do not approach this tree. Then you will be of the transgressors. But the devil whispered to them both in order to show them what was concealed from, from them of their bodies. Right? He said, your Lord did not forbid you from this tree except from becoming two angels or being among the immortals. Verse 21, and he swore to them both, indeed, I am of the advisors to you. Verse 22, so he indicated them by delusion, and when they tasted the tree, their bodies became apparent to them, and they, were, they immediately began to cover themselves from the leaves, so which means they became naked. And then they start to cover themselves with the leaves. If you take leaves from the garden, how much can you cover yourself? If it is a woman, she will take the leaf and cover her breast and take another leaf maybe to cover her ass or maybe, I don't know, because she doesn't need to cover the front. It's already under there. So she will cover her ass. So imagine a woman holding a leaf to cover her breast and a leaf to cover her backside. Okay. Now, there's a reason why I'm quoting this verse to you, based on what this guy said, right? Okay. And they immediately began to cover themselves from the leaves of the garden. And the Lord called them both. Did I not forbid you from that tree and told you both that the devil is a clear enemy to you? 
So based on what uh, Ari Ayman said, and also, yes, somebody was quoted concerning the Queen of Sheba when she came, she came to Prophet Suleiman. I think in Quran chapter 35, verse 27 or so. She came to Prophet Suleiman also. She, she was showing her shin. But now we are talking about a woman, he is saying, showing her figure. Any part of her body, because as, 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 as far as I'm concerned, the women he is talking about, the sisters, it's not as if they were showing their body. They were wearing a belt. They wear a belt. Even the Somalia ladies, the, the ladies I know, they wear the belt so that you can see their shape. Right? Okay. But now, so you say that they show their shapes, it is going to take them 500 years away from Jannah. So how about the wife of Adam? When her body became apparent to her and she was using the leaf to cover herself, what will happen to her? So I think hers will be like 1,000 years, uh, 2,000 years <laughs> away from the garden again. Is that what you are telling us? But this is the logic they get from their Hadith books. And they pass on laws which doesn't exist in the books of God. But I don't know how it makes sense to them. Do you get the point? So which means, according to the verses I quoted, since Hawa, the wife of Adam, became naked, and then she took the leaves to cover herself, which means she will be 2,000 years away from the garden again. But they believe in the Hadith. The Hadith tells them all this. And they believe it. And this same Shuyuks, they are watching videos. They watch movies and they see women wearing bikinis in the movies. They are okay with that. But you are here condemning the sisters because they are wearing belt. Let them, let them show some figure a bit because the guys need to marry them. If you, they start dressing like uh, ninjas, who will see them, their beauty to marry? You tell me. If the sisters are hiding all the beauty there under the ninja, you tell them to wear the bur bur uh, burka and whatever. Who will see them to marry? You tell me. You. You, Ahi Ayman, look at yourself. You wear makeup, you dress your hair, you put gel in your hair. You try to look handsome. The sisters are trying to beautify themselves also to get a market for somebody to come and marry them. So you are now telling them not to wear the belt. How can the company making the belts make money? So let the sisters dress. We are not saying they should be naked. But what is the belt has to do with anything? You, you, are, you, you, the gangster shake, don't you like a woman with shape? Huh? You don't like? Because how did you see it? Haven't you been watching them? So stop acting like you are an, an angel. Huh? Stop that. Allow the women to dress so far as they are not naked, stripping themselves naked on the street. Allow them. Stop threatening them with your garbage uh, stories and they're 500 years away from Jannah for just wearing the belt. Are you okay? What is wrong with you? A, a, a nice lady, young lady will wear a belt on her abaya and then you say 500 years away from Jannah. For what? <laughs> what about if she wears bikini? <laughs> that will be 2,000 years. <laughs> hey, Allah. This Mushrika, I don't know where they put their brains when they are... What is this? Huh? Threatening uh, uh, somebody from Jannah for 500 years. Why? Again, let's go to the next video. What is happening in your life? I don't care if you've become the biggest drug dealer here in London, my brothers and my sisters. It doesn't matter to me if you are not prostituting. Whatever the city might be, don't leave off the salah. The shaitan will make you feel as if you are being hypocritical. How can you pray when you've just, when you've just done this major sin? How? My brothers and my sisters, the salah is there to better your situation. The salah is there to remove the filth and the evil from your life. Okay. Now, listen to this guy. I actually didn't check his name. I've seen a couple of videos from him. Uh, you know, this, these are all guys from UK, right? The, uh, the Ahi uh, Ayman, and also this guy is from UK, right? Uh -huh. Now, listen. I'm repeating the video. Listen to what he said. No matter what is happening in your life. No matter what is happening in your life. I don't care.
care if you've become the biggest drug dealer here. I don't care even if you become the biggest drug dealer here. Now listen to what he's saying. You, you, you can hear the Nasheed at the back also. When the Nasheed is playing, that is when they say the dumbest shit ever. Okay. In London, my brothers and my sisters, it doesn't matter to me if you are not prostituting. It doesn't matter to him if you are the biggest drug dealer in London. It doesn't matter to him when you are a prostitute. So listen to what he's going to say. Whatever the sin it might be. Whatever the sin or whatever it is that it might be, listen to the advice he's going to give you. Don't leave off the salah. Don't leave the salah. Don't leave the salah, okay? So you can be the biggest drug dealer. You can be the biggest prostitute. Don't leave the salah, okay? Uh, he's telling you, not me. <laughs> he didn't say you should stop the drug dealing. Don't stop the prostitute. Just keep being the biggest drug dealer. Keep being the biggest prostitute. Don't leave the solar. Huh? Just do everything. You, do you remember when I played the video of this guy, the hobolos, that shouting guy, annoying guy with the donkey voice? Uh -huh. So this guy is repeating the same foolishness. They get this foolishness from their books. I'm serious. They, you don't get this foolishness from the Quran. This foolishness, it comes from their garbage books. And this is what they get. I'm serious. So now he's telling you he doesn't care even if you are the biggest drug dealer in London. He doesn't care even if you are, you are the worst prostitute in London. But don't stop the salah. The salah, keep doing. Keep doing your salah. Uh -huh. The shaitan will make you feel as if you are being hypocritical. He says the devil will make you feel as if you are being hypocritical. Yes, you are hypocrite. <laughs> you are. <laughs> If you are not, what are you? How can you be the biggest drug dealer and then you are you're still doing salah? No, how can you be the biggest uh, prostitute and you are still doing salah? You have to stop one of them. I'm serious. You, Why will you be doing both? That's a hypocrite. Do you get my point? You have to stop one of them. You can't be mixing the two. Hello, do you get my point? If you are telling people to you, you still be a biggest drug dealer and you are praying, that's a hypocrite. So you have to stop one. It's either you stop salah and do drug dealing or you stop your drug dealing and do your salah. Stop giving people this foolish kind of ideas or advice. What kind of foolishness is that? Do you, do you get my point? These people, they are very dangerous with the kind of advice they give people out there. Seriously. How can you pray when you've just when you've just done this major sin? How, my brothers and my sisters, the salah is there. The salah is there. The salah, the salah is going to save you on the day of judgment. Salah, you can be doing. Look, you forgot what Oblos told you. Oblos told you he doesn't care if if you are the worst murderer. You are the worst rapist. You are the worst drug dealer. You are the worst of everything. Wallahi, your salah, if you do one salah, is better than somebody who never do rape, who never kill, who never do anything. You are better than him. Because of salah? How does this, your salah save humanity? Seriously, you. Your salah, one salah, how does it save humanity? <laughs> Did your salah save Palestine against Israel? Your salah, the salah you have been doing, that five prayer you have been doing, did he save Palestine against uh, Israel? Huh? You are encouraging your salah from the Hadith books. And that salah, you think, <laughs> you think that salah is going to save you on the day of judgment. You are fooling yourselves. Wallahi. To better your situation, the salah... How does the Salah improve your situation? The, the one you have in the Hadith, how does it improve your solution? Because for why lil musallin, hum salatim sa'un, you are heedless of your Salat. How can that Salat save you? Now tell me, you the Bushriks, tell me how does the, your Salat, the five Salat you gave from you got from the Hadith books, the one you are practicing, how does it save you? Tell me, how does it improve your situations? Seriously?
is there to remove the filth and the evil from your life. He says the salat is there to remove the filth and evil from your life. Really? Really? The salat is there to remove the filth and the evil from your life. Really? Really? The last time I checked, the people who follow hadith, who, who, who claim they, they perform the salat, they still have the filthiness and evil in their mindset. I'm serious. Is it not of is it not out of that evil and the filthiness somebody went to stab this uh, Christian lady on the uh, in the Hyde Park in London? The speaker's corner. Do you remember the Christian lady who was stabbed with the neck, uh, the neck by the knife? Is it not that the same filthiness and the, the evil? How that how did that Salah stop that? You are encouraging people with foolishness and you think you are preaching and playing your nasheed at the back. The nasheed even makes it worse. Yeah. Uh-huh. So somebody, Kamal, uh, Kamal gave me his name. He says his, his name is Abu uh, Tamiya, right? Abu Tamiya. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Ayman. Let's go to Ahi Ayman. There's uh, another video from him. Let, let me go to the next video. Ahi, fix up. Be obedient to Allah. Be obedient to Allah and follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Be the reason why someone falls in love with Islam. Be the reason why someone wants to grow their beard or hair or, or rolling up their trousers or wants to pray. Be that reason. He, he thinks he's giving the advice. He was playing. You see the nasheed is at the back. He thought he was giving good advice. Let me tell you the problem with the advice. This advice he's giving. Now listen to the advice. So this is a message, brothers. He says this is a message brothers and his sisters obviously huh Achi, fix up he says Achi, fix up you have to fix yourself up so we are going to see how he's showing you how to fix up be obedient to allah be obedient to allah that is to god now this first advice is top notch if i'm obedient to allah i will never be obedient to your hadith books do you get my point? If I am obedient to Allah, I will never be obedient to the so-called fake sunnah you have created or your hadith books. If you say I should be obedient to Allah, there is no way I can be obedient to your hadith books. So now, he gave the best advice at the beginning. He is going to contradict his advice. Listen. Be obedient to Allah and follow the sunnah of Allah. Be obedient to Allah and follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. That is the problem there. Do you see the problem? Be obedient to Allah and follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. Do you see the problem? So he came from a good advice straight to the bad advice. Be obedient to God. Then from being obedient to God and follow the sunnah of the prophet. Where do we find the sunnah of the prophet? Not in the Quran. Where? In their fabricated books. Those books, they are the danger part of their Islam. Again. Because those books will let you become ungrateful to God. You are not going to be obedient to God. The sunnah he is telling you about, the moment you start following that book, you are never going to be obedient to God. Do you see where the problem is? Uh huh. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Be the reason why someone falls in love with Islam. He says, "Be the reason why somebody falls in love with Islam." But when you are following the hadith books, you cannot be the reason why somebody falls in love with Islam, unless somebody hates Islam. I'm serious. If you have to be the reason somebody falls in love with Islam. It has to be by your obedience to God. 
not your obedience to external books like Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Those books don't teach you value or moral ethics to be closer to God. I'm serious. Those books, they teach you falsehood. The Quran teaches you salvation. Do you see the difference? So when you follow the Quran, you become obedient to God. When you follow the other books they are telling you about, you go against God. Because those books are contradicting the Quran. I just proved the point to you. You saw the videos I played. You saw the verses I quoted. It goes contrary to what they are saying to you. Be the reason why someone wants to grow their beard. He says, be the reason why someone wants to grow their beard. Tell me, how does this beard save you on the day of judgment? What does the beard do to God? Ladies and gentlemen, beard, your beard, what does it do for God? He says you should be the reason somebody wants to grow his beard. And that is why all the Sunnis, they have this small comb. They try to let the beard grow by force. I don't know how much blessing they get for this. Why? Why? Of rolling up the trousers. Be the reason why somebody will roll up their hair or rolling up their trousers. Do you know the Sunnis, they like to wear the, the, the short version of the trouser, like below their knees. They have, they have the short trousers they wear. They don't wear the full long one. Have you, have you noticed the shiuks? That's how they dress. And then they will tell you that's how the prophet dress. Or <laughs> wants to pray. Be the reason. So this is a and also be the reason why somebody wants to pray. Now, out of all this advice he's given, the best advice among all what he said is to be obedient to God. That is the argument. Being obedient to God ends the argument. Do you understand? The idea is these people are puppets and they are moving an agenda. The agenda is to get you away from the way of God. What did the devil promise us? Listen to the promise of the devil. I'm going to show you something. You might think these people are bringing you to closer to God. No. They are taking you away from God. God gave us this advice in Quran chapter 2 verse 42. Do not cover the truth with falsehood and conceal the truth while you know. So what these people do is they mix the truth with falsehood to tell to the people. So they can say, on one hand, they can say something sensible to you. And on the other hand, they say something contradictory to lead you astray. They, you would think they are calling you to God but they are actually calling you to something else. Quran chapter 7 verse 16, listen to the promise the devil made. Here, it, the devil said, because of what you have trapped me, I will sit for them on your straight path. He's telling God, then I will come to them from their back front and from their behind. And from their right and from their left. And you will not find most of them grateful. This is the promise the devil made. He will sit on the straight path and wait. And he will come from the right, left, front, back. The only place you have left is up. That is to God. That is why God says, Hold on to the uh, rope of God altogether. Hold on to the rope of God altogether. Chapter 3, verse 103. God has sent down to you a rope. Hold on to the rope in order to escape from the devil. That is the book of God. That is the only way you can be obedient to God. And when you are following the book, it is not everything you are supposed to follow from the Quran. I repeat, it is not everything you are supposed to follow from the Quran. 
No. It is not everything you are supposed to follow from the Quran. Do you understand? Now, most people don't know about this. They think, okay, when we say we are following the Quran, it means we are following everything in that book. No. You go to Quran chapter 39, verse 55. God says, and follow the best of what has been revealed to you from your Lord. Before the punishment comes to you, surprisingly, while you do not perceive. So when you are following what God has revealed, it is not everything you are going to follow. You are following the best from it. The best based on what you know and what you understand. Quran chapter 17 verse 36, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. You don't have knowledge from, about something from the book, don't follow it. Wait till you know it, you understand it, then you follow don't go following things you don't understand. You are a fool when you do that. Now, so ladies and gentlemen, I played the videos from Asim Al-Hakim, uh, Abu Tabiya, uh, Hakikachu, uh, Ahi Ayman, and then this comedian who was holding the hair, he said he does the hair of the prophet. Now, the reason why I was playing all these videos is just to show you how these people will say things that which does not align with the Quran. This is what they do. They tell you things which does not align with the Quran. They've created a parallel religion against the Quran and Islam. That is why they classify themselves as Sunnis. So they call themselves Sunni Islam. That is not Islam from God. God never gave such a religion. So that is why whenever they want to lie to you, they keep saying the prophet said, the prophet said, the prophet said, and they never give you any reference. So beware and be careful. The people you take your guidance of Islam from. Beware. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing the topic to an end on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and now I'm, I'll be jumping on TikTok for a bit before I go. So if you want to join me, you're welcome. You have any question to ask, you're welcome. You have any interactions to make, you're welcome to TikTok. You can join me there. Let me see what I've missed. Uh, Juvi says, Salam, bro. Can you explain how to swear to Allah? Yes, when you say wallahi or tallahi, that is a swear. That's swearing. So let me see if I can give you some verse. <clears throat> if, if, if it's a swearing by God, you can say tallahi. You can find it in Quran chapter 12, verse 95. Tallahi means by God. Uh, we have uh, Wallahi. If you say Wallahi, it's also another form of swearing, right? Uh -huh. Wallahi and Tallahi. Yeah, you find... Uh, Yes, you find Wallahi, you find it in Quran chapter 6, verse 23, Wallahi. And Quran chapter 12, verse 95 or 91, you find Tallahi. So Tallahi and Wallahi, they are all ways of swearing to God, right? Uh -huh, and that is in Arabic, according to the Quran, yes. Uh, so let me see. Sister Dana says what? Hold the rope of Allah all together and do not become divided. Hold that rope tight and up to God alone. And do not let go. Yes. The rope of God is what we have to hold on to. Uh -huh. Yeah. Avram Bibushi, thank you for the gift. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, bro. Uh -huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hopping on to TikTok. I'll be on TikTok for at least one hour or two hours before I go. Aha, uh -huh. thank you, bro, for the gift. Thank you, thank you. Bless it, bless it, bless it. 
Uh -huh. So those on TikTok, uh, Facebook, and YouTube, the topic is coming to an end, right? On Facebook and YouTube. I don't want it to be very long so that you can re-watch the program on Facebook and YouTube. I'm jumping straight to TikTok now. So the Hadith use the Sunnis, if you are watching, I'm coming to TikTok. Join me. Let's let's go at it. The Sunnis, the Shia, the Ahmadiyas. If you are watching me, correctional officer is coming to TikTok now. I have one hour to two hours to stay there. Please join me. Did you say Obita? A A Abunasti. Katutan. You said he was a guest of ours. Katutan, Obita, Tavat. Ah, so thank you very much, Sister Fatima Chin, Mubarak, uh, Abdullah, Sharif, Karim. Thank you. Thank you uh, for being present. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Bilal Jibril, thank you. Abu Zars uh, Jalam from Philippines. Thank you. Uh, Bilal Jibril, I see you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Let me see here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So thank you all. I'm jumping to TikTok now. Yes. I'm jumping to TikTok now. Thank you all. Uh, stay tuned and then uh, we'll see you again. Yes, I'm going to the den on TikTok. Yes. So see you soon there. Uh -huh. Correctional officer is giving people a chance to hop on on TikTok. You are going to enjoy. Yeah, come. Brother Kamal, I see you. Thank you. Innocent Big Waterfall, thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate the support. God bless you all. Huh? Uh, Aka, Aka B says, oh, colleague. Okay? Join me there. Right? Uh -huh. Join me. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring the show on Facebook, YouTube, to an end. Till we meet again next week, God willing. Stay blessed.